worry Joe, I worry Joe, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Second of all, kind of ways I tell you what I don't know. Every time this this how the devil do though. He don't want to go right. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his gates with this giving in my heart. I will enter his cause with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what's going on, no matter what it look like, no matter what it seem like, no matter what it feel like, I'm gonna rejoice because why? The Lord has made me glad. Amen. Amen. We are so grateful and so thankful for this night. If I ain't got nobody with me, my best friend gonna be with me. Y'all better hear me. My ride or die. But Linda Washington gonna be here. She gonna be in him, him. And I thank God for it too. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna be talking about deliverance from Pharaoh's army. Hmm. Who do you need to be delivered from? Who's chasing after you? Who's coming for you? Who's running behind you? Who wants to take you down? Who wants to take you out? They coming for you? Coming for who? God's child? All right. We're going to find out what happens when you try to come after God's children. When you're going to try to take down God's people. What's going to happen to you if you try to come after me? If they try to come after you? We're going to find out. 
What happened? All right. You know, last week, we was crossing the Red Sea. We was getting ready to cross. We was crossing it. The water was on the left side. Water was on the right side. And they going on in. So now we're fixing to see what's going to happen when you try to mess with God's people. Amen. But you know how we start this time. We started with prayer. Father God, we thank you tonight for the, your loving kindness, your tender mercy. We thank you for all your many wonderful blessings, Lord, how you kept us thus far on this week. Have you kept us all day long, Lord? How you kept us in our right mind, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for how you've been there when we thought we had no one else. How you've been by our side, how you held our hand, how you dried our tears, how you... Lift us up when we were really weak, Lord. How you built us up when we were really torn down, Lord. How you always right there by our sides when we think all is lost. Lord, we just want to thank you. Because every time we feel that there's no hope, you are our hope. Every time we feel like we're alone, you show that you're by our side. Every time we think that we can't make it, you show us that we can. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for these our people who come to support, who come to listen, whether now live, whether later on, <clears throat> who come in the middle, who catch it at the end and then listen to it all over again. We thank you. I thank you, Lord, for each and every listener who's out there who wants to be a part of the Sunday school, who loves Sunday school, who love your word, Lord. Bless these thy people. Lord, at this time, I want to offer a prayer for the following families who are bereaved at this time, Lord. I can't think of her name, the little two-year-old baby who was killed, Lord. The family right there, just strengthen them, Lord, and lift them up, Lord. Just build them up, Lord. Be with them and stand by them, and Lord, let them know that you are there. You are the answer. Lord, I ask in a special prayer for the Hall Lister Grant family and the loss of their loved one, and Penedra Hall, and the loss of her daughter, Lord Jesus. Strengthen that family, Lord. Strengthen the mothers, the fathers, sisters, brothers, children. Lord, bless her babies, Lord. Take care of them, Lord. Keep them in your love and your care, Lord Jesus. We thank you right now, Lord. Lord, we're asking for a special prayer, special blessing upon the Drum Gould family, Lord. You know them, Lord, and you know all about them, Lord. Strengthen that husband, Lord. Strengthen that family, Lord. Let them know that they don't, they're not going through this by themselves, Lord. Be their strength. Be their, their guide in the time of bereavement, Lord. All the bereaved families, Lord, just another child was shot on and killed on tonight. Lord, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said that perilous times will come. And that's where we are right now, Lord, in perilous times. But, Lord, we know that in these perilous times, we need to be found saved sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, Lord, living the life that you want us to live, Lord. Lord, be with us as we go through these times. God, Lord, give us strength to make it to, through another day. Lord, give us the strength to keep going on. Lord, keep our focus on you, our minds on you, our eyes on you, Lord, and we'll ever continue to give your name to praise. Lord, as I teach this lesson on tonight, Lord, let it be all of you and none of me. Speak through these lips of clay. The words that you would have me to say. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in, my, in thy sight. My Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We thank God for all that he's done, all that he's doing, all that he's going to do. And we're just ever so glad that God is being who he is. He's, he's being who he, he's watching over us. He's blessing us. Hey, Linda, God bless you. And um, to let Rika know that we're praying for her as well. Uh, you, Lord, you know what that situation is. Just go there and touch my sister right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank God for all of you. We're talking about deliverance from Pharaoh's army. And <clears throat> we're talking about being delivered from the hands of the enemy. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in situations, we find ourselves with people, we find ourselves with a group, and, and we say, well, Lord, how did I get into this? Sometimes we know how we got into it. We know what brought us to that place, but we have to be willing to say, Lord, I said, Lord, you got to get me out of this one, Lord. I know I got in it, but Lord, I need you to get me out of this. I, I, Lord, I, it's rough on me. It's just, I don't know. And so I said, when you ask for Lord, the Lord for deliverance, pack your bags. Because you got to be ready. 
So when the children of Israel asked the Lord, they cried out to God, God, we've been down here for 400 years, Lord. We've been struggling. We've been slaves. and we've been, It's been hard for us, Lord. Lord, get us out. So they sent them Moses. And now they, they've, getting, they've gotten a way to escape. So now they, they crossed the Red Sea last week. And we only got in the sea. Not in the middle of the sea. But in the midst of the sea. I talked about that. We say we use middle and mist in the same phrase, but it doesn't mean the same thing. See, when you're in the middle of something, you're going to get touched and affected, and you, it, you, the thing is going to bump up against you. It's going to rub up against you. It's going to buff your bow. But when the Lord takes you in the mist, because the children of Israel went in the midst of the sea, the water was parted. By Moses being obedient by strengthening forth his rod, and the Lord sent an east wind to part the Red Sea. It was one wall of water on the left, one wall of water on the right, and then they were able to go in the midst of the sea on dry ground. That's what happens when God takes you in the midst of something. Your feet not going to get muddy, your feet not going to be wet, you not going to get wet, because why? God is with you in the midst of. See, if they was in the middle, they might have walked on, you know, they might got their shoes wet, shoes muddy, and then, you know, they got their clothes a little muddy, but no. God took them in the midst of the sea, and he could keep you in the midst of what you're going through. Girl, I'm out in the middle of this, and I just, no, 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 no. Don't see yourself in the middle of it. You know, sometimes we get ourselves in the middle of stuff, but God will take you in the midst of something. Because we, we're in the midst of the saints of God, we're in the midst of chaos. We're in the midst of crazy. We're in the midst of drama. But it's not, it doesn't come not us because we have our faith and have our trust in God. And when it surrounds us, we say, God, I need your help. Lord, I need you to deliver. I need you to set free. I need to know what's going on because this got to, this got something got to give God. But God will take us through. So we're going to talk about this deliverance. From Pharaoh's army. The introduction. The Old Testament records much destruction, warfare, and violent death. Such sadly is the norm for human society in every, day, in every age. Human sin, which began with Adam and Eve, guarantees that such horrors will continue till the Lord Jesus returns to this earth. See? Yet we must acknowledge that the Lord himself brought about death and destruction as well. Unlike most human violence, however, the divine judgments of the Lord are wholly just. While God's wrath is often seen in Scripture, thankfully also is His grace. While wrath rests upon those who reject Christ, through Jesus Christ, God has provided the means of escaping divine wrath. The destruction of the Egyptian army was an act of divine judgment. For the Hebrews who witnessed it, it was also a demonstration of God's power and glory. Now we know, can't nobody do what, <laughs> what happened but God. Now He told Moses to stretch forth your rod. But God sent the east wind, and that had to be some strong wind to cut open a sea and stand it up on both sides while the children of Israel went on through. My God. And then God kept a, a pillar, you know, of darkness. It was light to the Israelites, but it was darkness to the Egyptians. And they couldn't even see, couldn't even move until God removed that cloud. Let's go into the lesson. Exodus 14, 23 through 31. Exodus, the 14th chapter, 23 through 31. All right. And this is also the last lesson in this uh, the segment, this series, and in the book, too. So it will be next time for us to move to another book next time. Okay. Win a lesson. All right. Here we go. It said, And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen, they all said, oh, 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 wait a minute. Get them horses. Come on, man. Get them. Let's go. We got to get them. We going after them. We got to bring them back. We can't do this by ourselves. Let's go. And it came to pass that in the morning, watched the Lord looked into the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Wait a minute. Now it said, it came to pass. In the morning watch, 
looked upon the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptians. You know that song said, Pharaoh's on Pharaoh and his army got drowned in no. It said, here you go, even all of Pharaoh's horses. And the Egyptians pursued his horses, his chariot, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that he looked upon the host of the Egyptians. The host. Who's the host? Pharaoh. God always leaves a witness. And he looked up, he got to look, and he was like, wait a minute. He saw him looking at his men, and something didn't look right. He was like, what, what's going on? Well, I don't see what's going on. So the, and took, the Lord took the wheel chariots, the wheels off the chariots, because they were gone. All of a sudden, these well-oiled chariots, they were put together by experts. They were always kept in check. They couldn't none. All of a sudden, the wheels came off. Ooh. And they was going hard. So, you know, when if the wheels come off of your bike, wham, you're going to hit. Wheels come off your skates, whoo, bam, you're going to fall out. Wheels come off a car, or oh, I just might just stop in the middle of the road. You don't know. We're going one way. We're going. But can you be, can you imagine? You're at the bottom of the sea. And your wheels come off. Hmm. And so... They think they're going somewhere because they said, oh, my God, <laughs> oh, my God, we better go. Oh, Lord, we see now that God is watching over them. So we need to get up out of here. But they done got in the midst of the sea. They can't just run a couple of minutes and get back out. They got a long way to go. So they trying to run. They ain't got the chairs no more because the wheels off. Now they're trying to run. That's what they get for trying to run after God's children. That's what happens when people try to run up, run after you and track you down and run you down. What the Bible said? Come on, Psalms. Come on, quote it with me. When my enemies, even my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they were, they stumbled and fell. Did you fall? Oh, I'm sorry. Leave me alone then. Mm -hmm. It said, For the Lord fighting for them against the Egyptians. It took them to get in the midst of the sea to figure that out. So here go the Lord. Now the children of Israel done got through. They on the other side. But the Egyptians are in the midst. But they about to be in the middle. Uh oh, here we go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. God told them that same rod. Stretch it back out. Listen, listen, here we go. We're going to close it up. I done, done, I done delivered who I need to deliver. So now I got to close it up. That's what we need to ask God to do. When God delivers us from our past, toxic relationship. Craziness, Lord, close it up. I don't want it. Mm -mm. I don't want it to affect me no more. I don't want it to bother me no more. Close it up. Cl close it up. I, I, that chapter is closed. And when God closes it up, baby, it's closed. It ain't gonna bother you no more. I mean, sorry, no more anymore. I think that's how it's supposed to be said. Okay. It said, Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. He overthrew them in the midst of the sea. Can you imagine? You got to be looking at the sea and you on the wrong side of Jesus and you like, I think I can make it. I think I can make it. By the time you say you think you can make it, the water starts falling. It's like, wait, 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 what's going on here? Uh -uh, cause, and God made sure that they stayed in the midst of the sea because they took the wheels off the chairs. 
They might have had a chance if the wheel stayed on the chairs, but they didn't. That's what happens when the enemy is coming. Don't worry about the enemy being back there. Leave him back there. I told you. David told us in Psalm 23, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. If the devil is getting you, tapping you on your shoulder, and goodness and mercy is supposed to be following you, you sure that's still back there? They might be taking a lunch break. They might be, might say, I don't know about her, him, them. I don't know. I'm going to sit over here until they figure out they need to be good to the Lord so we can be goodness and mercy and can follow them. But that's what happens when goodness and mercy is following you. God is protecting you. God is protecting you from all kinds of stuff. You still don't know what he's protecting you from. You still don't know how it's rolling. You still don't know what's going on. You still don't know. That's why we say, Lord, protect us from danger seen and unseen. Sometimes we go the same way every day, every day, every day, every day. Hey, Charlene. Every day we go the same way. Then all of a sudden we say, "I'm gonna go this. I'm gonna take the. I'm gonna take the long ride. I just want to look. You know, I want to look at the scenery." And then you get home and find out it was a wreck, right where you would have been. Hey, God, turn on that street every day, but for some reason, you know the reason. Quit saying some reasons. You know it was the Lord's told you to go that other way. Give him the credit. We get a devil credit about everything. Why won't we get a law no credit? Something told me. You know that was the law. I said it was the law. That devil showed it. See, you could say the devil showed it. But when God do something, you want something. I had this feeling. Who going to give you a good feeling besides the Lord? Huh? Y'all be tell tell you about y'all little peoples. Okay. And then on 21st, it said the waters returned. Oh, they returned. Returned, baby. Return. You're going to see. See, it's not divided. No more. It's. They were in the midst. Now they're in the middle. And it's hard when you're at the bottom of the sea. And you're trying to swim to the top while the sea closing. I'm just. It's, it's rough down there. You think a wave coming in. You got waves and sloshes and going on. And it says, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. God drowned all of them. All of them. He'll make your enemies your footstool. And sometimes when the enemy is pursuing you, God will allow you to see the enemy. Take it out. Dismissed. Removed. Gone. Change man. Can't see no more. Have you ever run upon somebody that you know that you know that you know that know that you know that you know knew you back in the day and there was some bad blood? I mean, we talking knives, guns, fights. We bet we. My family is going to get your family. We're going to kill a few folks. And we're going to kill a few folks. And we're going to get this done. And then you get saved. But you don't know. You haven't seen them in years. You don't, you don't know where they are. You don't, you don't know. You don't know they found the Lord. You, you, you hadn't even thought about it. And then you find yourself in the grocery store. And you say, oh, Lord. There she go. And your heart gets a little disturbed. And you start calling on Jesus one by one. I mean, not just Jesus in several parts, but you know what I mean. Oh, Lord. And that person just walks by, and you, your heart about to jump at your throat. And about to just, oh, and you don't know whether you're going to faint, fall out. And they walk right up. You ain't changed. You still look the same that you did back then. You might have had a few, you might have had a few pounds, but your facial features had good, you stuff. And they walk, hey, how you doing? And you say, I'm fine. How are you? And you say, what up? Baby, good. God will hide you in plain sight. They ain't thinking about you, mom. They done moved on. God has covered you. 
That's his covering. Sometimes God's blood will make folks blind. They can't even see who you were. Oh, uh, but that's worth. Hmm. It says there remain not so much as one of them. All the enemies that were pursuing the children of Israel gone bye bye in the water. It said, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand, on the left. It was a wall. They had two walls. While they walked on dry land in the midst, not in the middle. Because if they was in the middle of the sea, there would have been some water on the, on the ground. They would have been walking in mud. But he walked them on dry land in the midst of the sea. It said, Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Can you imagine? All them peoples. When the, the wind, the water starts slushing and flopping and going on. God brought them all back to the surface. All back to the surface. Folks that try to kill you, they all on the surface. They don't have to die physically. Sometimes their mind just go bad. Sometimes they get in a situation they can't get out of. Because they messing with you. God will take care of you. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. That's what he said. Stop trying to fix it yourself. You don't have enough stuff. You don't have enough power. You don't have enough resources. You can't even trip them up like God trip them up. I just be like, okay, Lord. I, okay, Lord. Okay. And if you sweet and good, he'll let you see. And you be like, wow. But don't be like, yay, I knew Lord going to get you. See, that's what you get from this. That's what you, that's what you get. Uh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. So something going to come knocking at your house. And like, how does this happen to me? Remember when you was laughing when God was trying to take care of your enemies? We got to watch how we do. We got to watch how we act. Because God is looking at us too. While he's dealing with our enemies, he's watching us to see what we're going to do. It says, And the Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Now how come the Lord had to do something like that? That's just like folks to do. God can wake you up in the morning. Mm-hmm. You in your right mind? Uh-huh. Gave you eyes to see? Yeah. Gave you ears to hear what you say? Gave you hands to wave? Uh-huh. I mean, what? I walked down the street. I got in my car. I drove. I went to work. I had some problems. And I went on by my business. That's taking everything for granted. But then the Lord sent a tornado through. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. God is just, oh my God, all of the destruction. Oh my God, my oh thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, you took care of me. What? He took care of you all night long. Baby, you were asleep. You ain't know nothing. He said, you woke up and heard the alarm clock. You better start thanking him for simple stuff. Somebody woke up dead. What? Tell the Lord, thank you. If you ain't told him today, I need you to stop right now because I can't hear you. You can hear me. You need to tell him, thank you. Right now. You ain't got to go through a list. Just say, Lord, thank you. And if you want to get happy and name some stuff, go ahead. That Lord, I thank you that I, I got a reasonable portion. Of health and strength. Lord, thank you for peace of mind. Thank you for my health and strength. Thank you for being able to go to work every day. Thank you for the job. Thank you. 
Uh, from here. That's sometimes I hear sometimes. But it's not because of nothing the good Lord did, you know, selective hearing. That's what. Thank you for my mouth, Lord. Hmm? Thank you for my hands that I can weave. Lord, thank you that I can see. Is what I might need a little help. But that's all right. He made the man to fix me some glasses so I can see him. Hmm? Mm hmm. Lord, thank you that I'm able to feed myself. Some people can't even do that. So just tell them thank you. It ain't hard. It ain't complicated. It ain't no what to just tell them thank you. Lord, you don't have to go through you don't even have to go through no list. Just raise them hands up and say, Lord, I thank you. That shaking of the head, that, that your mind going, your mind is saying, remembering stuff. Lord, thank you for delivering me from myself. Thank you for delivering me from that toxic relationship. Lord, I could have been dead. The gun, instead of going off, said click. Thank you for my life. Thank you for the beating of my heart. Thank you for the breath in my lungs. Thank you that my kidneys work right. Thank you that my eyes work right. Hmm? Them intricate details. I, it's so many things and so much stuff. We could be affected, infected by God. Decided that grace and mercy was a little greater. And he's, we know that we could have been in some other situations, in some other factors, in some other stuff. But God said, I'm going to spare them one more time. One more time. Don't stop the second chance. All of us grown, we knew we ran out of second chance. Second chance happened years ago. Years ago. Especially if you're old as me. 50 plus. Baby, your second chance came at three, four. That's when the second chance was. Huh. But now I'm on this. Ooh. I'm, I'm riding in favor. Because when you learn better, you do better. You stay better. You grow better. You be better. You are better. You're not perfect, but you're better. You ought to keep getting better and better in God. Don't be trying to compare yourself to nobody and nothing. There's only one you. You be the best you you can be. With God said, I got all off on the somebody else. I forgot to, I'm about to forget to do the practical points. I just because when, when we start talking about thank you, tell the Lord thank you. I mean, we don't thank him enough. We complain. We talk about stuff. We talk about the situation going on. We talk about how to cheer that, how it's going to go, man. 45, it's all listening to children in me, in me. But when was the last time you just went into a whole thank you situation? In the kitchen cooking. Lord, I thank you for this hamburger meat. Lord, I thank you for the hamburger helper that's gone with this hamburger meat. Lord, I thank you for a loaf of bread. Loaf of bread. Y'all better leave me alone up in here. What? Thank you for the simple stuff. And then you ain't got the bagging when you need something big. Whew, let me get to these practical points, cheering. It's getting rough in here. It's getting hot in here. I'm getting a little warm. Y'all know that. I'm getting a little warm. I'm trying not to, okay. Go practical points. God has the power to reverse any situation to his children's favor. I'm not going to explain that. I don't know. I talked about that. He has the power to reverse any situation. I don't know how is this going to work. I have to shut up. Give it to the Lord and let him work it out. He can work it out. Jesus can work it if he let Jesus. Okay. When God is working on your behalf, listen to this, even your enemies will recognize his power. When the Lord start working, 
Them people that don't even like you be like, oh, the Lord, guess the Lord is with her. Guess the Lord is with him because I don't know. I don't know how else they got that. But the Lord, and then, you know, them others. I wonder what they did to get that. Maybe I just love the Lord. Maybe the Lord loved me. Maybe he just wanted to be gracious unto me. How about that? Maybe. But... Uh, and then we got to watch ourselves too because folks get to obtaining stuff. Notice I didn't say bless. I said obtaining stuff. And then, now how they get, now how the baby don't worry about how they get it. Because I promise you, if some of these folks told you how they got stuff, you'd be like, oh, they got, y'all don't keep that. I don't, don't want to be doing, oh, they, they did, they did. Oh shit, for real? No, mm -mm. Lord, be obedient to the Lord. Do what you gotta do. Go on back to you. Just end up with stuff. You just, the Lord just bless you. Okay, so don't even sweat it. Just go on back to your Go Just go on back to bed. The spectacular miracle at the Red Sea is hardening, but God's quiet work on our behalf is perhaps even more important to trust in Him. You know how to trust God. Don't just trust him when you want some. Don't just trust him when it get rough. Trust him all the time. I tell, I trust him to get me from here to there. I don't care what it is. I trust him to walk from one area to another area in my house. Because just that quick, I can be abiding here. So I trust him. I love him and I thank him. That he takes care of me. In spite of what my enemy tries to do, wants to do, hmm, I ain't worried. No, God, I'm in God's care. I'm not worried. God can turn our impossible situations into total victory. Impossible situations into total victory. No matter what's going on, no matter what it looked like. No matter how serious it may, oh my God, I just don't see how it's going, I don't see how it's going, I don't know how it's going, what in the world is going, I don't know what you, do. what you mean you don't know? A friend of mine had a post and it said, it said something to the fact, I might not be quoting it right, it said when you come to a dead end in life, do you give up or do you retrace your steps and figure it out? Some people answer, when you come to the dead end in life, where's God? Because God is no dead ends in life. So if you reach a dead end in life, apparently God is not with you at that moment. But my thing was, no, I'm not going to retrace my steps and try to figure it out. Because I can't tell you where I went wrong and be, go back. I said to, I threw this, just this example in there. I said, now Moses was at the Red Sea. Pharaoh's on and behind. Mountains was on both sides. And the Red Sea was in front of him. Did he give up? Uh-uh. Did he retrace his steps? Uh-uh. What he did, tip, tip, stuck that rod out. And the sea was, the way was made. So what I'm saying to you, when you come to a roadblock, Lord, make a way. I'm not going back. I'm not going trying to figure out what I did wrong. Lord, you help me find to figure out what I did wrong so I can keep going forward. Lord, you make a way. Hmm? Make a way. I'm not going back. Ain't nothing back there for me. Ain't nothing back there for me. No, thank you. Might get back to some trash. I, I, and I, if I go back to... Y'all be putting money on my books and coming to see me on Saturdays or Sundays. I ain't trying to. Nope. Mm-mm. Child, no. Okay. Last one. God's awesome power reveals that he is worthy to be praised. God's awesome power reveals he's worthy, <coughs> excuse me, to be praised. We know that. He's worthy to be praised. Awesome power. He made us. Child, wait a minute. We, oh, hey, what, how I look, what I look like trying to take where the hand go. Lord, let me, let me fix that for you. Let me fix it. Cause see, put my ear, 
I'm going to need a hear ear right here. And then I'm going to need a he ear right here. Because I want to hear what I'm saying real good. And so when people be talking about me, I'm be like, mm -hmm. Mm hmm No. God knew where to put your ears. What's the saying? He gave you two eyes. Two ears. One mouth. See the situation. Hear the circumstance. Speak the solution. Hmm. See the situation. Hear the circumstance. Speak solution. Your mouth should not override your eyes. And your ears. And when you look with your eyes, you're not looking with your eye eyeballs. Your eyeball eyeballs. You're not listening with your ear ears. Ears got waxing. Okay. Yeah, I have them. But the eyes and the ears are the magnified visions from the heart. So when you're listening to someone, make sure you're seeing them through your heart. The one God gave you. When you're listening, make sure you're listening with your heart. The one that God gave you. And when you speak, make sure you speak from your heart. The one that God gave you. We are delivered. We are set free. We are no more bound. If you have some chains holding you, ask God to deliver you today. Lord, I'm tired of being locked up, chained up, shackled. No. No. Today is going to be a day of victory. Amen. Amen. Next week, we will begin a new series as we're going into the winter quarter. And the series will be Prelude to Discipleship. And you know it's getting close to Christmas time. And you know what that means in the world of Sunday school. We finna talk about the birthday of Jesus. That's right. We gonna talk about it. And it's, the first lesson is Prophecy of Jesus' Birth. Luke 1, 26 through 38. Luke 1, 26 through 38. Now, we're going to, like I said, we're going to another book, so it won't be this book. We're going to the next one. This is the fall quarter, but we're going to the winter quarter. And like I said, if you want to order the book, you can. It's on Union Gospel Press, one word, UnionGospelPress.com. You can order the book there, or you can go to Flynn's Church Supply on Hearn Avenue. All right? Okay, so you can get your book or whatever, and you know, as I always say, I have the lessons. You can get it. You can get a copy of all the lessons. You don't have to get a book. You can even go on the website and obtain the lessons for next quarter. Just look on the when you pull up the front page, it's gonna have a list of things kind of in the middle, and it's gonna say winter quarter topics. That's what you want to click on if you just want a list of all the lessons, or I can send it to you, whatever you want. Now, also, we're going to another platform. We won't be here much longer. I may start next week, but I will let you all know in plenty of time. We're going to be leaving Facebook live and going to YouTube live. Ooh, y'all pray for me now. It's not going to be no different. You know, you know me. I, don't matter where I'm at, I'm going to be beneath. I can't be nobody else but me. But I want y'all to keep on praying for me because God is doing some things and God is taking me to that next level. And I don't want to disappoint him. I don't want to make him look crazy. I want to make God smile. I want to make God happy with me. I want to do the things that he wants me to do. And at the end of the day, he will say, girl, I love you. Keep on going. And at the end of the time, he'll say, servant, that come on, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. Y'all be good. Be kind. Be loving. Watch what you're saying, how you say it. We are offering up prayers again for Sister Eureka McCall. 
God knows. Don't be trying to find out why. Just pray. Just pray. ask to, okay. Pray for the family of the baby that was killed in the drive-by the other night. All right, pray. Pray for the whole list of Grant family and their our bereavement. Pray. Pray for the Drum Ghoul family and their hour of bereavement. Pray. And for every family that's going through bereavement, every family that's having trouble, we even lost another 19-year-old tonight to senselessness. So we got to pray. Cover your own children. If they're not out there, cover them. Pray for them. If they're out there, cover them. Pray for them. All right? All right. I love you. Ain't nothing you gonna do about it. If you try. Oh, no. We're going to have to talk about it. But anyway, <laughs> I love you.